Times Magazine recently released a list of the best 100 fantasy books of all time and I thought it would make a really interesting video for me to just sit down and hash out my opinions and reactions to the list because more so than exposure for authors who are probably already pretty popular, I think that lists like these serve to start a conversation and Honestly, fantasy has become more mainstream over the years, but it's still kind of a fringe thing. And seeing it being discussed on such a huge platform like Times Magazine is really exciting. So I just kind of wanted to chime in with my opinions and join the conversation. So thank you so much for watching. Before we get into the list itself, I think it makes sense to talk about how they came up with the list in the first place. To develop their list, they said that they began in 2019 and they recruited a panel of leading fantasy authors, including Tomi Adeyemi, Cassandra Clare, Diana Gabaldon, Neil Gaiman, Marlon James, N.K. Jemisin, George R. R. Martin, and Saba Tahir. And then each of these authors nominated a bunch of books, and then the other panelists voted on these nominees on a scale, and then Time Magazine used that to create this list. And I think that the way they put this together makes a lot of sense, and the key factors that they looked at were originality, ambition, artistry, critical, and prop critical and popular reception, and influence on the fantasy genre and literature more broadly. So all of those key factors and the panelists that they chose all made sense to me. Um, I think that N.K. Jemisin is one of the most lauded fantasy authors out there. She is a three-time Hugo nominee. She recently won the MacArthur Fellowship. And if anyone knows anything about fantasy, it's N.K. Jemisin, George R. R. Martin, is George R. R. Martin. And I think the name that really kind of made this list legit in my eyes was Neil Gaiman because I think that Gaiman is just a fantasy fan first and a writer second. Whenever I read his work or I hear him talking to another author or giving an interview, it always is very palpable that he loves fantasy and that he really understands the genre as a whole. And so seeing his name on this list kind of comforted me and I was like, okay, this this isn't just kind of a hastily put together thing by a bunch of journalists who don't know what they're talking about. No, it's it's a real passion project with a bunch of fantasy authors who know what they're talking about. That being said, I think my biggest criticism of this list would be the fact that they decided to include multiple books from the same series. And I think that that is a bad decision because one, they could have used those spots to showcase more authors. and. When you're making a list titled best fantasy of all time, you would think that they would want to use that real estate to showcase as many authors as possible and to cover as many bases as possible. And I think it's kind of disappointing that they decided to kind of double dip with certain authors and it just, it just felt redundant. But also too, I think it was kind of inconsistent and it sends the wrong message. When you have a series in its entirety on the list, but then you only have one book from another series because it kind of sends this message that either the rest of the series wasn't as good or that book is just kind of meant to symbolically represent the whole series. And I think it would have just been more consistent if they had just gone for one entry per series and just have that one book kind of speak for the entire series. And so that kind of leads into my next point, which is about books that were snubbed on this list. With any kind of list, award show, anything, you can expect some books to be snubbed. That's just kind of the way of life. Something is gonna get left out, otherwise like what's the point of having a list or an award show, whatever. But just because I recognize that doesn't mean I can't get mad about it. And I think the most unforgivable snub on this list was Robin Hobb's The Farseer Trilogy because Robin Hobb is just so underrated in fantasy and I would argue that her writing really transcends fantasy and her character work and her character relationships with each other are light years above her peers at times. I also noticed another pretty huge snub was The Way of Kings, which is kind of perplexing because Mistborn is on there. And I think that a lot of people would agree with me that Brandon Sanderson's magnum opus is definitely the Stormlight Archive. And I just think it was kind of an interesting choice to put Mistborn, but not The Way of Kings. And I know that a lot of people are probably gonna be upset about that, but at least Sanderson did make it on the list with Mistborn. So it kind of didn't bother me as much as Robin Hobbs complete leaving out. Uh, I'm super curious. Let me know if you think there were any other notable snubs that you think should have been on the list, but weren't. I know Scott Lynch is another one. The Lies of Locke Lamora definitely would have made my personal best 100 fantasy books of all time, but 
again like with lists like these there's as many lists as there are fantasy fans so it's kind of hard to please everyone but I do think there were several snubs that should have been on the list. So moving on to things that I did like about this list, I really appreciated that this list wasn't limited to just books that came out from like the 50s to 80s and they went back in time but also they picked a lot of contemporary books that came out in recent years and I think that just makes sense if you're making a list titled best fantasy books of all time then make it of all time. Um, I also really liked the diversity on this list and I realized this might be controversial because I think that there's this idea that just because something is diverse that means that that diversity has to come at the cost of quality and I definitely don't agree with that. I think that diversity is not mutually exclusive to quality and oftentimes you kind of need diversity in order to be quality. Like with lists like these it wouldn't have made sense to only have authors from a certain region or a certain ethnicity or a certain gender because fantasy is so pervasive and literally every single civilization, every single group of people on earth has some kind of fantastical storytelling. And I think that this list reflects that with authors from South Asia to Japan to Europe to all over the world. I think that this list does a really good job of encompassing different cultures and being inclusive. And my final opinion and perhaps my most controversial opinion is that the YA fantasy and middle grade fantasy books on this list absolutely deserve their spot. And to be clear, even though I think that there are books that should be on this list that aren't, I also don't think that any particular book on the list doesn't deserve its spot. For example, I brought up The Way of Kings as being one of the books that was snubbed, but like at the end of the day, The Way of Kings wouldn't have really benefited from a spot on this list anyways. Like it's already one of the most best-selling fantasy books in recent years and Brandon Sanderson isn't really harmed by not having his book on that list. He doesn't need the exposure, he doesn't need the sales, he's doing fine. And I actually like that this list introduced me to a lot of books that I had never heard about and I'm really excited to go and read them now that I know about them. Now that I know about them and I know that they were vetted by authors like Neil Gaiman, N.K. Jemisin, George R. R. Martin. That makes this list a little more valuable than just being a kind of rundown of a bunch of classical fantasy books that I've already heard of and I'm already aware of. So when it comes to the YA fantasy books on this list, I know that YA is kind of a pejorative in certain circles and I myself have certainly been guilty of being pretentious about YA and being like, oh, I only read adult fantasy, I only read real fantasy. But I have kind of had a change of heart in recent years and I realized that my disdain for YA stems primarily from the fact that I grew up. I am no longer a teenager so I don't relate to YA fantasy books anymore and it makes complete sense that I wouldn't like something that wasn't written for me. That doesn't mean that those books have no value or that they shouldn't be celebrated. And hear me out, I think that YA fantasy is more influential on the current generation of teenagers than books like Lord of the Rings. Probably more teenagers have read City of Bones or An Ember in the Ashes because those books are more accessible. And as a whole, YA fantasy is more popular than adult fantasy because YA fantasy can reach a larger audience. So even if I don't personally love the genre, I can recognize that it's important and that it's here to stay. And it kind of reminds me of something that Neil Gaiman said in one of his speeches when he was accepting the Newbery Award Medal. And he said that children's literature is the most important of all. And I would extend that to YA because YA is the books that young people read. YA is what teenagers read. And what they read is incredibly important because like, I don't know how to explain that teenagers are our future. And so what they are reading and what they're being influenced by is inc is incredibly significant and worthy of a celebration. So my knee-jerk reaction to a lot of the YA and middle grade fantasy was kind of like, why is this on this list? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. But the more I think about it, the more it makes sense and the more I appreciate that they included those books. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, I think that lists like these are great because they start conversations and I would love to talk to you guys in the comments and I'm calling out all my booktuber friends to respond to this list and respond with their opinions and their reactions. I would love to watch and I would just love to hear what you have to say. And so yeah, thank you so much for watching and be sure to subscribe for more bookish content.